They have the land was a little different than this. Talbot Avenue was not this close to the bridge, so we didn't have the sharp turn onto um, Talbot Avenue. The, the road was a little further over. The, the land was more elevated uh, on the other side where the school is. That area where the school is now is where the um, <coughs> Linden Black Sox baseball diamond was. <laughs> and so the, the land sort of slanted and cars would park along there and watch the baseball games. So that's a part of the history that some people don't know and they think the bridge has always been the sharp turn here and I'm glad that they're going to kind of straighten it up <clears throat> a little bit. Uh, so we are, we are familiar with the old but we want to address the new. So the new bridge will take care of a lot of the problems that we're having with the uh, with past. When will it start? When will they start building it? When will they start building it? Well, it's a purple line. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, according to their schedule. It's a guess right now. It's according to the schedule this spring, but that's an amorphous. I mean, they closed all off some spring. Street. Yeah, they closed off Spring Street Center. You know, yeah. the shopping center is closing down. Yeah. Yes, they've known that that was coming. You know, for a long time. Yeah. It's been the, been the base, the baseball team that you mentioned. The Linda Black Sox. Yeah. Yes. Now tell me about them. They were part of a. The Negro League, or what? It, it was uh, the African American communities throughout Montgomery County. Uh, most of them had a baseball team, and so they played each other. They didn't play the white leagues; they played the, the black leagues. And this was our baseball team. So that the people would be high school through twenties or something in, 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 in age, and and up, and up, okay. <laughs> and anyone could play on the team. I'm yes, sorry. Uh, when was this bridge open? What year? 1918. 1918. Mm -hmm. hey, it Charlotte? would be celebrating its 100th year before your time next year. Yeah. Hey Charlotte, can you talk a little bit about the collection of uh, photos that you and Pat have put together over the years? And if there is a, is that that's not in the community center at the moment, is it? It's not included in the I said, is what is what is the uh, future of your collection of photographs that describe the, the baseball team and, and everything? All right, we have a collection of, as you mentioned, photographs. We have an exhibit on the history of Liftonsville. And as part of that exhibit uh, that was put to help, that we got started through the uh, planning department, uh, that started us with the first exhibit that was held at the Coffield Community Center. Uh, with that exhibit is a collection of pictures that most of them, which was taken from my little brownie camera <laughs> as, as a young kid, you know, growing up. But that also holds a lot of history of the community and the background. And the baseball team that you, you were talking about is included in that uh, collection of pictures. What we would like to do is to see the community have a museum that will house the exhibit permanently. It's because, a wonderful collection. Yeah, yeah really because uh, right now it's, it's touch and go. And it's in somebody's, part of it is here and part of it is there. It was in the community center for a while. We used to put it up Black History Month, and by popular demand, we carried it throughout the whole uh, year. Uh, but there was a water problem there, and some of it got ruined, and some of it, uh, you know, wasn't too too usable again. Uh, some of it was saved. So we would like to have a permanent place to house that exhibit. Has the Smithsonian Afro-American Museum expressed any interest, or do they know about this? They, they, they know about it. We're talking to them. I'm going there next week. Okay. All right. We'll talk one. to you, too. October 1st. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One question, sir. Uh, hi. Um, I'm a, my name's Anna. I live in North Woodside. I'm an eight-year resident, and I wanted to say thank you. The first time I really learned about the history of the bridge was in the Washington Post article, I don't know, that was like a year or so ago, and I was deeply moved. Um, I'm almost emotional about it, but the, the, symbol of, the symbolism of this bridge um, for the Lindsville community. And um, I, I, I guess I want to ask you, forgetting what's politically feasible or economically feasible, what would be your wish for this bridge, um, preserving it one way or another? Um, for your community, whether as an art project, I'm curious what you would want if you could get what you want. Actually, the bridge seems to have taken on a life of its own, <laughs> the new life, uh, uh, following uh, publicity and posts and uh, videos like uh, Jay's video and so forth. And so we would like to see something that will help. It, let me just go back and say this. The people who grew up in this community, in our community of Lippensville, 
if you ask any of them who are around now, they all will have a story about the bridge. And so it's like endeared to all of us who grew up here. It was like uh, David mentioned, our lifeline to communities outside of uh, Littonsville. So we would like to see some resemblance of the bridge housed someplace in Littonsville so that uh, people can come back and they can remember uh, when we have our annual back to community celebrations, people can talk about the bridge and they'll have something to look at, not just pictures.